Hello and welcome to the Django Celery Mastery course. Just a quick reminder, if you like this course and would like to access the source code and more, you can access this course on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, is in the video description. So let's begin with an introduction to Celery. Now, Celery is a distributed task queue system that is widely used for executing tasks asynchronously in Python applications. Celery as a task queue or job queue system enables us to offload time consuming resource intensive tasks from our application to separate worker processes. So in many applications, some tasks require significant time to complete or consume many system resources. And examples include generating complex reports or processing large data sets or potentially performing computationally intensive operations. So running machine learning models, sending confirmation emails, maybe we need to perform some web scraping or crawling, processing images, generating reports. So these are all the type of tasks where potentially we could consider utilizing Celery to offload these resource intensive tasks from our main application to a separate working process, potentially on another server, another computer, somewhere to be processed. So when tasks are executed within the main application, so this example here, we have a web server, maybe a Django application. We're sending requests to this server. The requests are being processed here. The process flow is A, B, and C for the request to be processed. So that's the main application code. And you can see here, hypothetically, in task or part of the processing of request in part B, it requires some sort of intensive task resource intensive task, which is going to take around about five seconds to complete. Now, when tasks are executed within the main application here, they can slow down the responsiveness and performance of the entire system, causing delays in serving users requests. Celery addresses this challenge by providing a task queue job queue system. It's going to allow us to define these time consuming tasks as independent units of work known as tasks. So instead of executing these tasks immediately within the main application, Celery is going to push them into a task queue. There they will wait to be processed. So here in this example, now we've removed B, we pushed B task over to the new server, and that's then going to be processed by this new server. And in the meantime, utilizing asynchronous programming techniques, we're able to continue processing the request and just letting the user know that, okay, we're processing your request. It's going to take a couple of seconds. So if we bring in the task queue or the idea of this task queue, what's happening now then is we have a separate worker process here on the right hand side for task B's. Any request that comes into the server, task B will be then pushed over to the task queue and then handled by this server, this worker process here. So by offloading these tasks to this dedicated worker process, Salary effectively decouples the execution of time consuming operations from the main application. This allows the application to re remain responsive, the server here to remain responsive and continue serving user requests promptly. So in actual fact, we can offload tasks to multiple servers potentially. Now this distributed nature of Celery will enable us to scale our application vertically and horizontally by adding more workers to handle increasing workloads. As I've mentioned here, we can distribute the tasks across multiple machines or even separate servers, depending on our requirements. Now, decoupling tasks from the main server, that potentially has some different issues related to the management of those tasks. Now, luckily, Celery does provide a reliable infrastructure for managing the execution of tasks and also handling task failures and tracking the progress and results of each task. Celery is definitely an incredibly powerful task queue system, which provides six key features. In addition to what we've touched on lightly already, asynchronous task execution and distributed task queuing, 
We can also use Celery for task scheduling and periodic tasks in our application. Imagine we wanted to set a task to run every week or every month, then we could set a schedule for that utilizing Celery and then offload that task to maybe a different server to process that task. Now, what really makes Celery almost complete is that it also provides error handling, which is a critical aspect of any task processing system. Celery has got everything more or less covered in that respects. It's going to provide robust error handling mechanisms and support automatic retries for failed tasks. And this ensures reliable task execution. Now, additionally, Celery offers monitoring and management features, allowing us to keep track of task progress and performance. So overall, this empowers us to optimize and fine tune our applications task processing for maximum efficiency. So while Django is a popular web framework that often goes hand in hand with Celery, Python Celery can be used with other frameworks and standalone Python applications. So Celery is a versatile task queue system. It can be integrated with various frameworks, for example, Flask, and can be used in different Python projects. Maybe you're creating a standalone data processing and analysis type of project, or you're creating an API. Generally, wherever you're running Python code, you can potentially then utilize Celery. Now, although this course is very much focused on Django Celery, this information inside of this course can be utilized and applied to other frameworks. And if you're building, for example, standalone Python applications. Right, so with that said, the rest of this section of the course is us developing the infrastructure, our working environment, so that we can start to utilize Celery. Now, what we're looking at here is a typical architecture of the components that's going to be found in a typical Celery setup. We're going to need some sort of application, which we can describe as the message provider. As we've already said, in this course, we're going to be utilizing Django, the Django framework for us to build on top of. So we're going to, first of all, in this section of the course, create a Django instance and prepare that ready for us to start developing. So we have this message provider. So that's where the tasks are going to be originating from. Now, when we generate a new task, that message or that's going to trigger a message to be sent to the message broker. So at that point, the next task will be to build a message broker or to create a message broker. So for this, we're going to be utilizing Redis. Now, we don't need to have a course on Redis to utilize it. We simply just need to install and start it as we're going to see. But Redis, if you aren't familiar with Redis, is an open source in memory data structure store that can be used as a database. So, or can be used as, data, as a database or a cache and a message broker. So it is known for its exceptional performance and versatility, making it a good choice for various applications. So here um, we're going to be utilizing Redis primarily as our message broker. So it's going to store the tasks that are sent from our message provider. Now, as and when the new tasks are stored in our message broker, Celery, the Celery worker is going to be monitoring Redis for new tasks. It's going to pick up the tasks and then process those tasks. So the third stage of this setup that we're going to be developing is to build the Celery worker or to create a, a new server for the Celery worker. This is going to be in, in our scenario, our setup, our Docker setup, a separate server, which is going to be processing the tasks that are sent to the message broker. Now, as we've already mentioned, error handling is a critical aspect of any task processing system. And here, what we're going to need is a way of recording um, failed tasks uh, and potentially other information related to task progress and performance. So we're going to need a results backend. So typically, we would need to set up a results backend. That's what we're going to do here. Now, that results backend could be a technology such as Redis, or we can use traditional database backend. So for example, Postgres database or MySQL. In our basic setup, initially, we're going to be utilizing Redis, not only as the message broker, but also as the results backend. And then we have the four pillars, if you like, of the Celery infrastructure. We have the message provider, which is going to generate the tasks, send the task to the message broker. Salary workers are going to be monitoring the message broker for new tasks. 
they're going to be distributed to those workers and then the work is going to be completed or executed on those servers and then once they're complete messages will be stored in the results backend regarding the tasks the completion and status of those tasks and then any results from those tasks and can also then be sent back to the message provider to be handled appropriately so if i were to summarize i'd say that celery is a comprehensive tool for building robust and efficient applications that can handle complex and time consuming tasks effortlessly so its features like asynchronous task execution, distributed task queues, task scheduling, results handling, error handling, and monitoring make it a good solution for developers looking to enhance their application's performance and scalability.